So yeah, firstly, obviously, you've had a, a few of these actually in your, in your previous time, I would imagine, but we're here for the military match day. You know, why is, do you think it's so important? I know it's very important, first and foremost, to the chairman. Uh, he was very keen when I first uh, came to the football club to tell me about the day, and he's got pictures up and some memorabilia uh, in his office. I know he's very proud, and obviously supporting uh, the local militaries something that I think is really important. The work that they do is so important to us and probably a lot of it goes unseen. I've visited RF shows with myself as well. Um, and I know it's a big day on the calendar for the football club. I think it's the 10th season uh, that we're into now. And I believe there's maybe 500 uh, tickets and military people will be here at the weekend. So I'm hoping they can give us that extra bit of support. But it's, it's great to have them at the football club. Yeah, and it, you know it's a, a quick turn on another home game from the weekend. It'd be great to get you know the, the same level of support, like you say, some some extra people in the crowd as well. Yeah, um, I think any extra support is most welcome. Uh, hopefully they'll be vocal, and as you said, it is a quick turnaround. But as much as you know, it's still a, a defeat the other night. I think it's a, an easier one to kind of move to one side and start thinking about that next game because of the circumstances, what, what happened on the evening and ultimately we can't change that. What we can try and influence is, is the game on Saturday, hopefully keep 11 people on the pitch and uh, not have maybe some dubious decisions go against us. Yeah, you mentioned that obviously, you, you said afterwards you were going to appeal it, is that something you have done? Yes, we looked at it, um, obviously you get emotional on the evening. Um, and you have your first thought. I think the images backed up what I thought and saw. Um, I think it was a strong tackle that I believe still should be in the game. I want to be in the game. I think the fans do as well. Um, and it's just the, the sort of coming together afterwards, but there's no malice, I don't think, on either player's part. Unfortunately, um, you know, Ryan felt the injury in terms of Ryan Woods and I think that and possibly the, the player's reaction maybe influenced the referee I would suggest. Um, we didn't, you know, Jordan sort of looked to get up initially and perhaps that, like I said, clouded the judgement, I'm not sure but who knows when, when you appeal. We've, uh, I think I said before, I've seen lots of these decisions and sometimes the outcome is what you think it should be, uh, and other times they still stick to the decision. When, obviously you want to find out before Saturday, when will you find out? I'm not entirely sure, in all honesty. I know it, it was this afternoon that it had to be lodged, um, so it'd be good if it's <laughs> pretty quick, because obviously you want to prepare for the game, and we want to know whether Jordan's available, so we, when we do his work tomorrow. What's the process like? Because from what I've heard before, it's not an easy process, putting in an appeal, there's quite a lot of bits and bobs that you have to put into it? Yeah, any evidence that you feel backs up your, your case and that will be statements, that will be uh, footage, you know the media guys will, will help on that and have done um, and then you're just trying to present your best case uh, but I, I th I, there's also a little bit of what footage is uploaded uh, on their system and what they're looking at and again sometimes things can look different from, from different angles but we believe that we've got a case and, and that's why we've, we have appealed it. Obviously I can see Price, Jack Price's shirt hanging up there. Obviously that got announced. I thought you were going to say Lewis Cox. <laughs> I, can see, I can also <laughs> say Lewis Cox. <laughs> um, but yeah, Jack Price signing obviously. Yeah. What, obviously we found out earlier in the week that he was training with you. What was the, the process behind getting him and, and actually signing him? I think Jack was here anyway, getting uh, his, his rehab and treatment, which we're happy to to provide and then it was a case of when he was going to get back out on the grass and he managed to do that, he's trained a couple of weeks now um, and just the quality that he's shown realistically and I, I'd also like, I don't know him well yet obviously but the character that he certainly comes across I think could be key for us so in the end you know obviously speak to the chairman and Mickey to see if we can do a deal and Thankfully, we've got to that point, so hopefully we can get him involved. Um, I think we have to acknowledge the fact he's been out a long time, so we have to be uh, cautious in how we use him. 
but at the same time, you know, we can't obviously have signed him and then think, oh, we'll wait till last game of the season and he can have a kick around. So fingers crossed he can get involved quickly. And then it's down to us and Jack to a degree in terms of letting us know how he's feeling uh, to how much football we can get out of him. This has been a rumour for years, probably since you were here last time about inside, yeah. and obviously, but then being from Shrewsbury as well, it it adds to that, to, you know, being local. What kind of footballer is he though? For for those that don't know, just very good on the ball, first and foremost. Um, technically very good. That stood out straight away. You know, n not being uh, disrespectful to the group that we've got, but I think his quality just stood out from almost the first kick of the football that he had, even when I was watching him doing his rehab work um, with Skitty and he started introducing ball work, just how he passes a ball, you can see that he's technically very, very good. Um, I think he can bring that quality, maybe a bit of creativity to, uh, to the team and his career suggests that he's, you know, again, being a very good player. The injuries obviously uh, set him back, but if he can come through that, which at the minute, touch wood, he's, he's showing, then we could have a, an extremely good player on that. So you made changes at, at half time, but you said to, to conserve some people for Saturday. Yeah. How has everyone come through the, the rest of the week? Yeah, as far as I'm aware, from what I've seen today, everyone's uh, good to go. So that's pleasing in terms of, of selection. Um, and it's down to try and pick the best team, I guess. But it was, you know, one of the few positives, I suppose, from the other night was that we managed to get some of the players some minutes that haven't had many in, in recent times, certainly. Um, so I'm hoping that that, again, will be beneficial to us, particularly, you know, as you team selection and, and make your substitutions, that they feel a little bit better in themselves if the opportunity arises. Another important game Saturday at home. How are you feeling getting into that one against Carlisle? Um, positive, as in looking forward to the game, genuinely. As I said, at the other night to me, frustrating, and ultimately it is another game gone where we can't, you know, we didn't get any points from it. But at the same time, like I said, it's not, it wasn't a 3 0 defeat like Lincoln, for example, where I was really disappointed in our levels. It was more, I think, circumstance, watched it back. But the lads did pretty well in terms of their discipline, um, sort of delaying Exeter's attacks. The, the, the hard part was trying to get the other side still with 10 men because we were playing against a team that are good in possession anyway. And that was what we spoke about prior to the game. So it was always going to be even more difficult against that type of team. I think sometimes you can come up against a team and it doesn't that that losing that man doesn't have as big an impact. Whereas the other night, I think it was one of those teams you don't want to be hand to ten men against. Uh, but that's like I said, that's been and gone. Now the focus is very much on on Carlisle and trying to get the three points, which would make it a decent week for us if we can on the back of the win last Saturday at Port. Just finally, going from a busy week this week to no game next Saturday, what are your kind of plans with regards to, to training and, and that with no game week next Saturday? I think it gives us a bit of breathing time um, for players and for staff. We've just been talking about when it's Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, there's, there kind of isn't enough hours in the day. Um, how we perform and, and the outcome will probably influence what we do on Saturday in terms of whether the players get a little bit of a rest, uh, conscious of the time of season we're in as well. Um, but again for staff I think it gives us the chance to look at you know, plans for moving forward for next season, looking at players and uh, things like that. Also some training sessions we can maybe do something a little bit different uh, rather than specifically preparing for the next opposition. That will obviously be part of it, but we, we've probably got a week where we don't have to worry too much about that. And then start thinking about two games in quick succession after you know the international break. Thank you very much.